Abdur Rahman, the coppersmith. This was a patient and long enduring man, a native of Kashan. He was one of the very earliest believers. The down was not yet upon his cheek when he drank of the love of God, saw with his own eyes the heavenly table spread out before him, and received his faith and his portion of abounding grace. In a little while he left his home and set out for the rose garden that was Baghdad, where he achieved the honor of entering the presence of Baha'u'llah. He spent some time in Iraq and won a crown of endless favor. He would enter the presence of Baha'u'llah and many a time would accompany him on foot to the shrine of the two Khazims. This was his great delight. Abdur Rahman was among the prisoners exiled to Mosul and later he fairly dragged himself to the fortress at Akha. Here he lived, blessed by Baha'u'llah. He carried on a small business, trifling, but he was content with it, happy and at peace. Thus, walking the path of righteousness, he lived to be eighty years old, at which time, serenely patient, he soared away to the threshold of God. May the Lord enfold him there with his bounty and compassion and clothe in the garment of forgiveness. His luminous grave is in Akha. Muhammad Ibrahim Tavrizi <laughs> This man, noble and high-minded, was the son of the respected Abdul Fatah, who was in Akha prison. Learning that his father was a captive there, he came with all speed to the fortress so that he too might have a share in those dire afflictions. He was a man wise, understanding, in a tumult from drinking the wine of the love of God, but with a wonderful basic serenity and calm. He had inherited the nature of his father, and he exemplified the saying that the child is the secret essence of its sire. For this reason, over a long period, he found delight in the neighborhood of the Divine Presence, enjoying utter peace. Daytimes he would carry on his trade, and at night he would come in all haste to the door of the house to be with the friends. He was close to all those who were staunch and true. He was full of courage. He was grateful to God, abstemious and chaste expectant of and relying on the bounty and grace of the Lord. He made his father's lamp to shine, brightened the household of Abdul Fatah, and left descendants to remain behind him in this swiftly passing world. He always did what he could to provide for the happiness of the believers. He always saw to their well-being. He was sagacious, grave and steadfast. By God's grace he stayed loyal to the end and sound in faith. May God give him to drink from the cup of forgiveness. May he sip from the spring of God's bounty and good pleasure. May God raise him up to the heights of divine bestowal. His sweet-scented tomb is in Akha. Muhammad Ali i Ardi Khani <laughs> flower of tender youth, Muhammad Ali, the illumined, heard the cry of God and lost his heart to heavenly grace. He entered the service of the Afnan, offshoot of the holy tree, and lived happy and content. This was how he came to the city of Akha and was for quite a time present at the sacred threshold, winning a crown of lasting glory. The eye of Baha'u'llah's grace and favor was upon him. He served with a loyal heart. He had a happy nature, a calmly face. He was a man believing, seeking, tested, and tried. During the days of Baha'u'llah, Muhammad Ali remained steadfast, and after the supreme affliction his heart did not fail him, for he had drunk the wine of the covenant, and his thoughts were fixed on the bounties of God. He moved to Haifa and lived a firm believer near the Hazir Khods by the holy shrine on Mount Carmel till his final breath, when death came and the carpet of his earthly life was rolled up and put away. 
This man was a true servant of the threshold, a good friend to the believers. All were pleased with him, finding him an excellent companion, gentle and mild. May God succor him in his exalted kingdom and give him a home in the Abha realm and send upon him abounding grace from the gardens of heaven, the place of meeting, the place of the mystical contemplation of God. His amber-scented dust is in Haifa. Haji Acha Itabrizi Early in his youth, this spiritual man who came from Tabriz had sensed the mystic knowledge and drunk the heady wine of God, and he remained staunch as ever in the faith during his years of helpless age. He lived for a time in Azerbaijan, in a moor of the Lord. When he became widely known thereabouts as one bearing the name of God, the people ruined his life. His relatives and friends turned against him, finding a new excuse to hound him with every passing day. Finally he broke up his home, took his family, and fled to Adrianople. He reached there during the close of the Adrianople period and was taken prisoner by the oppressor. Along with us homeless wanderers and under the protection of the ancient beauty, he came to the most great prison and was a confidant and companion, sharing with us the calamities and tribulations, humble and long-enduring. Afterwards, when the restrictions were somewhat relaxed, he engaged in trade and through the bounty of Baha'u'llah was comfortable and at peace. But his body had become enfeebled from the earlier hardships and all the suffering, and his faculties had deteriorated so that ultimately he fell ill beyond hope of a remedy, and not far from Baha'u'llah and shadowed by his protection, he hastened away from this least of worlds to the high heavens, from this dark place to the land of lights. May God immerse him in the waters of forgiveness. May he bring him into the gardens of paradise, and there keep him safe forevermore. His pure dust rests in Achah. <laughs> 